Hi again everybody, this is Joseph. Another tutorial. This will be about the AC generator, often called the alternator, and how it affects the certain systems and how what we should look for. First of all, beginning with the wiring diagram over here, it looks a little sophisticated and complicated like they always do. We gotta break it down. As you know, the first thing is to make your starter motor start, we have to understand first the battery, and it's the symbol of the, of the battery, obviously, is this, with multiple cells in it. As you can see, we have a, 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 a long line, a straight line, a long line, a straight line, indicating many cells in it, six cells. Obviously, polarity positive and negative now in this this is actually the diagram from the dealer dealer manual so it's gonna have more instructions and descriptions so first thing is obviously we have to understand in order to start to crank the, the engine we still have, first have to start to start a motor which everybody is, is familiar with this is where the battery plays a major role. So this branch that you see over here on the black line over here goes to the starter, the solenoid. The other one, the other branch of the wire, the thick wires, I might add, goes to a 175 amp fuse holder. Then it goes to power distribution, schematics, and wiring systems. Now, I made another video about that. That means it's going to the PCM, the computers, goes to the fuel injectors, the ignition control module to create spark. So first, first things first, we have to get the engine cranking. In order to do that, the PCM controls the grounds for the fuel injectors. So by theory, we first have to have those things operate first before the alternator plays a role. So in other words, when we, we wanna make the crankshaft, the camshaft turn, we have to make the fuel injectors supply fuel. We have to make the ignition control module supply spark to make compression. So therefore, this power distribution we have over here goes through this huge fuse holder of 175 amps and it goes to like i said the modules which give grounds to the fuel injectors which make it happen to open and close at the right moment to give fuel into the cylinders secondly we have to give like we said the ignition control module remember there's ignition coil we have to open and close that ignition coil at the right time in order to create spark that's the computer's role once that happens the crankshaft the camshaft turns the pulleys turn the belt turns and it turns the alternator now the battery did its task it did its purpose and that was to get the engine starting now we drained it now it's already it's tired the battery is already drained of any of energy. What do we do? We have to recharge it. We have to replenish it with current. We have to charge it back. You cannot undercharge it. You cannot overcharge it. So two things in the alternator that we have to understand. And, I'm, and there's another video that I'm going to make later on because this is very complicated. Once you turn on your ignition key, you see the light come on. The light that you see come on is this light right here, the warning light. This is located in the instrument panel cluster, in your instrument panel by the dashboard. This is the symbol for battery, and this is the symbol of the LED, the lights on. So obviously it gives you that because the generator is not supplying anything yet. So the warning light comes on. Once you get the generator going, the AC generator, which is called the alternator, then the light comes out. And how does this, how does this occur? Pretty, pretty complicated. 
So we said, now we have the engine firing. We have to replenish the battery and we have to keep the supplies going. We have to keep the fuel injectors going to supply fuel. We have to sp keep the spark going. Remember, we weakened him. So therefore, the alternator now comes into the role. The alternator, like I said, and please subscribe to my channel of Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph and my other channel, Joe Electronic Schematics, which is catered for, I guess, students, technical colleges, learning electronics. Um, thanks for subscribing, those who have subscribed. I only need a thousand subscribers. Pretty rough in the beginning. Anyway, I call it an AC generator because it does produce AC, alternating current, sine waves. But in this case, we don't need sine waves. I can't take AC to charge a DC battery. What I need is to change the AC to DC, the same as the battery. This is done, and I'll make a separate video because I'll go into it deeper. This is done by, you see, three rectified diodes, three Zeno diodes. These, according to the phase, will be turned on and off according to the phase of the stator and the rotor which creates the AC um, sine waves, voltages. In order to change AC to DC, we need these things called rectifier diodes. We have six of them here, rectifier bridge. Once that occurs, we have DC coming out from the alternator. If you've ever been in an alternator, you see a uh, a uh, connector over there called BAT. This is what you're looking at. You're looking right at the output of the DC. The output of the DC also goes to this part of the generator, the regulator. So the DC, let's say it's 13.6 volts, goes to charge the battery. At the same time, it goes into heat, into the regulator, so the regulator knows how much voltage is being created by the generator itself. And when it does that, it has to either turn on and off the rotor to create more voltage or less voltage or more current or less current to supply the accessories. What do I mean by accessories? If you put your lights on, if you have a, um, a, a, um, a theft, they turn alarm systems, anything. Any system that you have, which will pull more, which will pull more of a load, they call it on this. This has to adjust the proper rotor on and off by a duty cycle, and I'll go into it in a different video. Anyway, why do we need DC? We, in order to charge DC, the battery, we have to create DC. We can't charge it with AC. Therefore, the role of these six. Actually, three rectified diodes and three Zener diodes. You can see the the symbols are a little different for these than this. This is called the cathode. This is called the anode, the triangle. This is also a Zeno diode also. Has it has a different the purpose a Zeno diode. Anyway, now that the battery is weak, we go over here. Remember the alternator now is is the brains now. It's supplying the current through this. And as you can see, I made it through a blue highlight, a blue arrows. First, when it comes, when we first start up the car, you're looking at the pink. The pink means going this way. I went going this way from the battery to the power. Like I said, fuel injectors, ignition control module, everything. Once this has been weakened and we recharge it, then the current will flow back here. And now you see this blue wire. Now the alternator will supply the accessories. How much does it? How much current does it give? Depends how much accessories you have and how much you have to recharge the the, the battery. So you cannot have current flowing out of the battery and this charging the battery. It's either one or the other. Current can't flow at the same time. So. Once the current from the alternate goes here, and, I'll sh and I can actually measure it from the, the wire, how much current is actually flowing from the alternator through this wire over here, from BAT. Like I said, if you see my videos, I have one that I put a clamp meter in. I show you how much 
current I measure. Now, if you see other videos, they say, well, of course, the regulator is, the purpose is to hold and regulate. That's what regulate means. Regulate means to sustain or to keep constant. So anything from about 13.6 to 14.3, around that ballpark, is sufficient. However, I'm not, I'm not really happy with that. I could put a, a voltmeter here, which I will show you, with respect to ground, positive here, and I'll measure it, and I'll measure 1314. When I put the accessories on, air condition is everything on, the load, they call it putting the load on the regulator. This is the regulator, putting a load on it. So therefore, the voltage should be kept constant, 13.6, 13.8, whatever it is, right? 14, whenever I put more accessories, this, that's what the definition of a regulator does for power supplies, keeps it constant when you put different loads on it. However, I'm not happy. I still want to measure the current output. I want to see how much current goes from here, let's see here, to the battery and to the accessories. And I'll do a different video of that. That will tell me how much current is going from the alternator. And when I put the accessories on, it'll tell me how much more current is being supplied. I do not know that by just measuring 13 to 14 volts. That's not enough information for me. Remember, I like watching current and knowing how much current flows through a circuit. That's important for me because it helps me diagnose. It helps me troubleshoot. But remember, in order to measure current, if you remember my, my videos on the channel Joe Electronic Schematics, which is for students, I said you have to break apart the two points in order to put the meter. But when I made the video, I told you I have a clamp-on meter that I just clamp it on I put it around it. I don't have to break the circuit physically. And that is a great convenience. And I can measure the output of this, of this alternator. So therefore, we crank it, we get, the, we get all the modules to work to create the spark, to create the, the um, fuel injectors, to create the air, uh, uh, sensors, mass airflow sensors, all these things. Remember, it takes a while for the oxygen sensors. It has to go into closed loop. Then, once the pulley starts and the crankshaft, the camshaft, the cylinders fire, you have compression in each cylinder. The alternator starts turning. It produces AC. Once it produces AC, we rectify it. It's called rectifying to DC. Two things again. AC has to be changed to DC to charge a DC source number two we cannot charge something at the same voltage if you notice the voltage when you ch charge something you always have to be at a higher voltage so 13 to 14 volts is enough to charge the battery we cannot charge this to 12 volts to 12 volts you cannot charge anything even your f your uh, phone charger you can't charge something at the same level it has to be higher but we cannot overcharge this cannot be over, it cannot be under. It can't be, if it's 11, we get a, a code. We get a code, we have to put the scanner on. If it's uh, undercharged, 11. If it's 16 or something, it's overcharging. That's not good for the battery. Therefore, I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, once this happens, serial data is the communications of OBD2. And this is how the PCM let's say talks to the other modules and it gets information and gives information what is going on how do you know what's going on when you put on when this warning light comes on in your dashboard this warning light comes on shows you the battery part of it goes to a DLC which is where you plug in for your scanner and then you have the other part the PCM where after it communicates, it says there's an error over here in the generator. It'll say, okay, if it's undercharging or overcharging or there's a problem, this light will go on. Serial data means that's a communications form that Chevy's use to communicate with modules. It's like speaking English to English, French to French, Spanish to Spanish. Everybody has to be talking the same language. 
So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronics Schematics by Joseph. I appreciate the, the comments. Please leave, leave your comments. I need a thousand subscribers and about 240,000 minutes by YouTube until November. Difficult task. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the videos. Please look forward to the next ones. Thank you.